I'm Dr. P. James B. Dick, the head of the Peripheral Nerve Laboratory at the Mayo Clinic, Rochester, Minnesota, and I'm going to uh, describe to you the study in which we are doing uh, work on post-surgical inflammatory neuropathies. For a long time, I've been bothered by the fact that people often will develop neuropathies after surgery. Neuropathy is damage to nerves. So neuropathies can be generalized, meaning all the nerves in the body are involved, or they can be very focal, meaning only one or a couple of nerves are involved. What do nerves do? Nerves conduct electricity, and so they move your muscles, they feel, and they regulate pain. And so people who develop neuropathy, these patients that we're describing, essentially all had pain, a lot of pain, they all had numbness, and they all had weakness. And it came on fairly suddenly, after the surgery. So usually neuropathies are felt to be due to compression or stretch. That is, during the surgery a retractor pushes on a nerve or a nerve gets pulled and this causes damage to the nerve. However, there are times in which the neuropathy comes on removed from the surgery, that is a day or two later, or removed from the site. So they operate on the leg and they develop a neuropathy in the arm. And it doesn't make much sense to me that these neuropathies would be due to compression or stretch. And so for a long time, I've thought there must be other causes of some of these neuropathies. The problem, from my perspective, is how to prove what those causes were. And it occurred to me that we should probably look at some nerve biopsies of people who were involved with these types of neuropathies that didn't make sense. And so we started collecting nerve biopsies from patients whose neuropathy occurred after having a surgery and those neuropathies didn't make sense from a compression cause. And so the study that we've done, and this study is done with Dr. Nathan Staff uh, and myself and other colleagues. Uh, Dr. Staff is the first author and I'm the senior author on that. And we collected a group of 21 patients who had surgery, who had nerve biopsies, and those nerve biopsies all showed inflammation. And so what we found is that in a group of patients, after their surgeries were performed, they would have an inflammatory cause of the peripheral neuropathy. Um, why does that matter at all? And why should patients care th th uh, why th that this happens? And I think it actually does have uh, real meaning for patients. And that is, these were potentially treatable neuropathies. So in the past, uh, the surgeon would say, well, I think you have this neuropathy, it's probably due to a stretch injury, and we should just follow you and see what happens. But if the neuropathy is due to the immune system attacking the nerve, then maybe we can intervene and give patients uh, immunosuppressive drugs, and that might actually help cause, cure the neuropathy faster and make the neuropathy get better at a quicker rate. What we did in the study is we had 23 patients. Uh, they all end up having nerve biopsy. Uh, those 23 patients fell into sort of three types of neuropathy patterns. That is, they had a focal neuropathy, meaning it involves just one limb. They had a multifocal neuropathy, meaning it involved a couple of limbs. Or they had a generalized neuropathy, meaning it involved all four extremities. Um, the neuropathies came on fairly quickly. Uh, some of them came on with a day of surgery. All of them had to come on within a month of surgery to, for us to call it a post uh, surgical inflammatory neuropathy. They all had nerve biopsies. All the nerve biopsies showed inflammation. We also identified an additional 12 patients in whom the neuropathy didn't make sense from a surgical perspective as far as stretch or compression injury. And so we thought they were probably inflammatory, but we didn't biopsy those patients, so we didn't prove it in a sense. Um, and then we uh, treated a lot of those patients, and uh, they did uh, show significant improvement with different treatments. The treatments mostly were intravenous steroid treatments. Some patients got intravenous immunoglobulin as a treatment. We tended to treat them over a three-month period and bring them back afterwards to see how they did. I think this is potentially quite exciting for patients. So what we did is we did these nerve biopsies and we showed inflammatory infiltrates in the nerve. Uh, oftentimes they're involving blood vessels and in about two-thirds of the patients it suggested a microvasculitis. Vasculitis is inflammation of blood vessels and it causes damage to nerve by causing little strokes in the nerve uh, 
blood and nutrients aren't getting to the nerve and so they get little strokes in the nerve. If we come in with immunotherapy, perhaps we can make it better. So we treated a bunch of these patients and they actually did get better with treatment.